Hello everyone, glad you're here. I'm Pastor Nate at the Journey Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. Hey, let me ask you a question just to get us started. Is there something you have like a weakness for? You know what for me is Nutty Buddy Bars. I love those things. Those little Debbie Nutty Buddy Bars. You know, I know that sugar is not a good thing, but those little yellow boxes, they just seem to appear when I'm walking through the grocery store. Maybe it's the Lord who wants me to see them and enjoy them because He created them to be enjoyed. I, I don't know, but I confess before you all right now that there is a jumbo size Nutty Buddy Buddy Bar box in my pantry at home. I got it at uh, Sam's, which is like one of those Price Club Costco places, and it was amazing. It's still there. I'm working on it. Maybe you have a weakness that, you know, it's not that harsh. But the truth is, is that all of us has faced temptations that really try to pull us away from God's direction for our lives. Look, we're just uh, in the fourth message of a series we've been doing called Been There. And the whole idea is this. Jesus was fully human and fully God, but the fully human part means that whatever you have been through, Jesus has been there. And it's all founded on this scripture. It's in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, as we are yet, without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus was tempted just like us. He understands. Now, here's the thing about us. Some temptations we have, some urges, they just seem too strong to overcome. We could minimize them, or we could justify them, or... We could do anything to make it so that it's, you know, not our fault. But when a temptation leads us away from God's will, something dies. Something dies. It could be a relationship. It could be a job. It could be something far worse. And you need to know that Jesus faced temptation and yet did not sin. What can we learn from him? How can we do it? Can we do that? Remember last week we said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen to me, you may be weak, but you can always lean on the one who is strong. And that's what I want to talk about today. Would you guys pray with me? Father, as we look into your word, as we see how we can resist, fight, stand against temptation, knowing that we don't have the strength to do it, but we can rely on you, speak to our hearts and minds, for this is a battle for our hearts and minds. God, God, show up in our hearts, in our minds right now, God, and lead us away from temptation because we know that is away from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, to get the most out of this online ministry, you're gonna to have to download the JC app. Now, you'll see a QR code pop up, and when you do, get your phone and just scan that code because this will allow you to connect with us in lots of different ways. You can give to the Journey Church. You can see previous messages. You can ask for prayer. You can find out what's going on, and I want you to do that. And while you're doing that, let me give you something to think about so that you can pause the video for a second. Here's what I want you to think about to get our minds going in this direction. Look, do you have a weakness for something that's not so debilitating like, you know, chocolate, or maybe you have a weakness for donuts, or maybe you have a weakness for anything that doesn't seem debilitating, but, you know, it's a weakness. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. So maybe you can think about that. Reflect on it for a couple of minutes. I want you to pause the video. Maybe you can discuss it with someone. You can pray about it. But whatever the case is, pause the video. Make sure you got the JC app and... Then, when you're done reflecting on this, we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about temptation and how Jesus faced it. Right at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, right at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he was tempted. Now, he's baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, and once he committed to acting on God's call in his life, it was on. A battle began to be obvious. Here's how scripture talks about it. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, which makes perfect sense, right? I mean, if you don't eat for 40 days and 40 nights, you will be hungry. Here's what happened next, though. The tempter approached him and said, If you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, I want you to make an observation here. Who is tempting Jesus? Who, who is tempting him? Now, certainly God led him into the wilderness, but who is tempting him? And so what is temptation anyway? I mean, let's just define that for a second. There's a quote by a man named Tim Chalice, and it says that temptation is anything that promises satisfaction at the cost of your obedience to God. Now, the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be forged, to be sharpened, to be prepared for what's coming. You know, we forget that strength really comes with challenge and suffering. Remember, we said that if there is no occasion to rise to, no one rises to the occasion. So God shapes us in the toughest times. He leads us into places where we are shaped to be strong in the face of challenge. And that's the trick, because when you are weak, that's when this tempter, our enemy, comes. And I, I look at temptation not only as obedience to God being lost, but you know, in reality, temptation offers usually short-term satisfaction at the expense of long-term joy, which is really the definition of immaturity. So God takes us to places to be challenged so that we can grow. The Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be forged for the mission He had ahead of Him. But we get in these situations that are challenging and we feel weak, you know, you, you may feel weak, and this is when the tempter comes. You're in physical pain, and you take medicine to relieve the pain, but the trouble is, some of us, when we're in emotional pain, will be tempted to medicate our pain the same way. Maybe you're feeling emotionally empty. You may be tempted to fill that place with an inappropriate relationship or pornography. You hurt because you don't feel valuable or worthy, so... Someone else may become the target of your verbal disdain, your gossip, your slander. Temptation promises satisfaction at the cost of your disobedience to God. Yet, God wants the best for you. Temptation takes you away from God's direction for your life. It leads you to sin. You know what sin is? Sin is always the wrong direction. Sin is always away from God. So temptation kind of has this process. What is the process of temptation? And I've kind of talked about this before, but just to be clear, here's what I think the process is. We have a thought that evokes a feeling and becomes an action. Now, maybe something triggers our appetite, whatever our appetite is, but when we have a thought, we think something may be better for us. Maybe we think we're missing out. Maybe we think that would be awesome, but a desire begins to emerge. And desire is fueled by feeling. We have a thought. And a feeling emerges, an emotion that's driving this thought. And I want you to be clear, it's the emotion that causes so much damage, a desire within us, usually for us, about us. It's sort of self-centered. It's why James says, but each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. And then after the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Wow, a desire is fueled by feeling, an emotion drives it. This emotional response puts you in a weakened state, and in this weakness, the enemy comes for you. Oh, wow. Those shoes really look nice. I think I will just, even though I don't have the money, I will spend it. Oh, wow. What's just one more piece of cake? Oh, you know, I know that person's not my spouse, but it's just an innocent lunch. We're all adults. You know, inside what's really happening is we're feeding the fantasy. Maybe we think we're missing out. Maybe our view of reality is distorted, but the thought comes, it evokes a feeling, and then we act. A thought, a feeling, an action. By then, we justify our temptation as a need, and we take what we desire. There's some truths you need to know about temptation. Because if you're going to stand against it, there's some things you need to know. First, temptation, it is not a sin to be tempted. In fact, remember the scripture we read at the beginning of this? For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. 
Well, this is good news. Temptation is not a sin. But when you follow Jesus, that doesn't mean temptation will go away. In fact, I find that when you start to follow Jesus, temptation will likely get worse. So we have to be diligent. The follower of Jesus that was so act first, think later, later uh, a guy named Peter writes, be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone, anyone he can devour. I want you to keep that in mind. Our enemy is a predator looking to kill, steal, and destroy you, your family, your friends, your story of God's power and healing in your life is not a sin to, to be tempted, but it is the place where the enemy comes to do damage. So here's another truth about temptation that I really don't want you to lose sight of. God will test you, but he will not tempt you. And there's a difference. Remember, Jesus is drawn into the desert to be tested. He's going to be forged. James writes, No one undergoing a trial, a test, should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. God doesn't tempt you to trip you up. God tests you to forge you. God doesn't tempt you to make you fall. He tests you to strengthen you so you won't fall. We are tempted by our, well, our own desires and our enemy uses it when we're weak. Our feelings can't be trusted. So they drive us to action that is often destructive. And God doesn't want your destruction. He wants your construction into something strong and beautiful. God tests you to propel you forward in your life, towards life. But the enemy tempts you to pull you back, to make you fall. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. And God doesn't tempt you. He tests you. And here's the third truth about temptation. You're most vulnerable to temptation when you're weak, but you think you're strong. And that happens all the time. I mean, think about our culture, self-reliance. I can get through it. I've been there and done that. But the truth is, it doesn't always work so well. I've often heard, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. But the truth is, I see people get fooled all the time the same way over and over again. People tend to make the same mistakes over and over. Listen, the enemy comes to you when you're weak. When you're weak. So when you're in pain, you might be weak. When you're lonely, you might be weak. When you're angry, you might be weak. When you're sad and grieving, you might be weak. And our enemy is a predator. And predators look for weakness to attack, to kill, to steal, to destroy. So whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. Now the fourth thing I would tell you about temptation is that temptation comes through a door that's been deliberately left open. Let me be honest. Downstairs in my house, in the pantry, there are Nutty Buddy bars. But if Nutty Buddy bars are such a temptation, why do I keep them in the pantry? Let's get a little more serious. If gambling is a temptation for you, why would you check out a new casino or eye down those machines in the local market corner store? Listen, if there's someone at work that's getting the kind of attention you crave from your spouse, why would you really keep going near them instead of pursuing your marital relationship? Listen, you have to think about that. Temptation usually comes through a door deliberately left open. So now let's get a little more serious. Is there a temptation you struggle with? I want you to pause the video right now, and I want you to pray about this and ask God to show you a place where you might be weak, where the enemy is looking to kill, steal, or destroy in your life. After you pause the video, we'll come back and we'll talk about some simple ways to resist temptation. So this is going to be an oversimplification, but I want you to know these are clear steps on how you can resist temptation. And remember, you can't do this on your own power. So first, first, a simple way to resist uh, temptation is to eliminate it. Eliminate it. You know, Jesus said something really hard. He said, 
If your eye causes you to fall away, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into hell fire. I, I see that and I'm thinking, wow, that's intense. But sometimes when it comes to temptation, we have to be drastic. We have to take drastic measures to stop temptation from getting us because we are weak. Maybe we have to realize that we, can have, we, we have choices and we can choose between overeating sweets or diabetes, shopping to feel better or massive debt, little secrets with that attractive coworker or divorce. Remember we talked about doors being deliberately left open? Close the open doors that go in the wrong direction. Eliminate places where, where temptation could show up. Here's the second thing. You want to fight it. Now, I don't mean fight it like you've got the power on your own to fight it. I mean, I want to give you a tool to fight with. Now, remember Jesus is being tempted. He is hungry and he feels alone. And yet he fights back, but not on his own power. He actually quotes from Scripture. This enemy says, Hey, you're weak. You're, you can take the quick way out of this test, this forging, by turning the stones and the bread. I know who you are. You can do it. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man must not live alone on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, it's very interesting that Jesus quotes his scripture because it has a little bit of power in it in the sense that it teaches us how to fight back. He's fighting back with the written word of God, speaking it into the air. He's saying it out loud. This becomes his power. You need to know this is a fight. Temptation is a battlefield of the heart and mind. And you're, you can be defensive, you can stand in Christ, you can lean on him, but the only way to fight back and I think we should, is by using Scripture, to memorize Scripture. Paul says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. If Jesus lives in you, you have salvation, and it covers your head like your mind. He's there. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, this word, word, in Greek, it's actually the word rhema, and it means to speak the Word of God. Speaking the Word of God is our offensive weapon against the enemy. And Jesus wasn't just tempted once. He was tempted three times. He was tempted to prove his power by throwing himself off the top of the temple. And Jesus responds to the tempter, do not test the Lord your God. That's what you're doing. You're trying to see what he'll do. Don't do that. That's disrespectful and dishonoring. You know what it is. Then Jesus was tempted with power and authority if he would just worship the enemy, who apparently has power and authority in this world. And Jesus responds, you shall worship the Lord your God only. Each one of these responses comes from Deuteronomy. It was already written. It was God's power written down. It was God's word codified, but spoken into the air had power against the enemy. Jesus met all of his attacks with temptation of temptation with Scripture. Um, this was the power of God in Jesus for this particular challenge. So, eliminate it, fight it, and escape it. Listen, sometimes you just have to get away. Sometimes you just have to get away. God will provide a way out. I love this scripture from Paul. It says, No temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way out so that you may, able, you may be able to bear it. God doesn't tempt you. He tests you. He doesn't try to shake you or rock you or mess you up. He's trying to shape you and develop you and grow you which is why it's so important to be close to God. Who you are with will affect you. And when you're in the habit of trying to listen to God's voice through a quiet time, through reading His Word, you will hear God's voice and you will know 
and see temptation coming all the more clearer. The closer you are to God, the clearer it is to see temptation coming. The closer you are to God, the easier it is to fight back. The closer you are to God, well, the easier it is to escape. So I want to bring up this last one because, well, I wanted to start with it, but I think it's better at the end. A simple way to resist temptation is to recognize it. The world's culture doesn't seek godliness or purity or goodness as God made it. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but being immersed in this world, my words sometimes don't honor the Lord. My actions, Nate's actions, do not honor the Lord. My eyes, I've looked at things that do not honor the Lord. And I gotta be honest, I've done this more than once. More often than I'd like to admit. And you know what happens to me afterwards? I feel a sense of loss. In fact, I feel a sort of a grief that I've lost something. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, I pray for God not to let my heart get, heart get too hard where I don't have that sense of grief. Because godly grief brings life. Godly grief brings life. Paul writes to the church in Corinth, for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation, life, without regret. But worldly grief produces death. What is worldly grief? Worldly grief regrets being caught. Worldly grief regrets losing power or material. It seeks to minimize pain and justify selfish actions. It allows us to go in a direction that is not God's will. The direction of sin, away from life, that leads to death. Eliminate it. Fight it. Escape it. Recognize it. For temptation will come. It will. But you, you don't have to face it alone, which is good news, because it's likely you don't have the strength to win the battle. But Jesus does. He's won already. I'm praying that you will be connected to Jesus. I'm praying that you will be resting in Jesus. I'm praying that He is the Lord of your life. You may be weak, but you can always lean on the one who is strong. I want us to take the last few minutes as we listen to this worship song, and I want you to consider these three questions. Is there a godly sorrow that I need to repent? That I need to say to God, I, I'm doing this and it's, it's not good and I need to walk away in the other direction. I need your strength. Lord, I need you. Is there a place in my life where temptation exists? Where I leave the door open? Where I don't have the strength to close it on my own? Lord, I, I need you. What step can I take, Lord, to discipline myself to memorize Scripture? I'm struggling with it and I need your help. Lord, Lord, I need you. I'm praying that you'll spend this last few moments praying, Lord, I need you. Is there a sorrow? Is there a place in my life? How can I minimize Scripture? And I'm praying that God will strengthen you. God wants the best for you. And honestly, we don't have the strength to fight all the temptations that come our way. But Jesus does. And while we may be weak, in Him we can be strong. Father, I pray for everyone as they, as they listen to this worship song, that you speak into their hearts and minds, that you strengthen them, that you draw them to you, that we can walk away from the temptations of this world and walk into a life of goodness, of purity, of hope and healing and wholeness. Lord, let us exist to engage others with the love of Christ so that all families may find hope and healing and wholeness. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.
defense 